I'm going to share how I exactly scaled my rental property portfolio to 14 properties by the time it's 35 years old and worth $4.2 million. And I did it in a very safe and approachable and accessible manner, which I'm so excited to share with you. Today's video, I'm going to share five proven strategies and two common mistakes that can completely derail your journey. I understand buying rental properties can be super expensive, especially in a high interest rate environment. I started in a high interest rate environment before the financial crisis. And I'll share these five proven methods that allowed me to scale my real estate portfolio even when I was short on cash. I didn't grow up in a wealthy background. I don't have a trust fund. I don't have any inheritance. I'm sharing this because I believe if you are creative, you can find ways to do this and in a safe manner. I'll also share how many properties I bought with each method just to be transparent with my journey. The first method is my favorite method, which is called the live in then rent out method. Simply speaking, it's literally you moving into a property, living in it as your principal place of residence. Then over time, you decide to move out. But rather than selling that property, you decide to keep it and go buy your next property. I started with a condo. I lived in it for a year and a half. Then I moved out. Then I bought a two bedroom starter home that looked like a mushroom. I lived in it, renovated it. And then after a year, I moved out and then moved into another home, which was a town home. Now, why would I do this? I did this because it's so much more affordable to buy a place as your principal place of residence because you only need a minimum of 5% down. I bought three properties this way with only 5 to 10% down max max. It was always a starter home. Now, the second method is called house hacking. House hacking is simply you live in a home and you have someone else subsidizing your mortgage because Housing expenses are super expensive in Canada. And for me, I always believed if I can control the biggest expense of my life, which is housing expenses, then I have more money to invest. So I decided to house hack my semi-detached home, which had a ground floor suite that I rented out to students. I used the cash flow to save and invest in more real estate. I did this with two properties, including the one that I'm living in right now. Now, the third method is joint ventures. Simply speaking, this means you partner up with someone else that can provide capital or provide the experience. And in my case, I provided the majority of the experience and the other partner provided the capital. And I made sure that this partner was a silent money partner, meaning they didn't really get involved with choosing the property, with choosing the tenant, with managing the expenses, with collecting the rent, um, making sure it attracts the right tenant and gets marketed properly, et cetera, et cetera. I did all that work. It's called sweat equity. In this method, I decide to partner up with a lot of my family members. I decide to help out my brother to buy his first condo in Vancouver. I partnered up with my in-laws to buy a small multifamily unit in Ottawa. I also partnered up with my dad and my aunt to help them build their wealth and bought two townhomes and two condos in the prairies. Joining up with someone can significantly reduce the amount of cash that's involved. Now let's talk about the realities of joint ventures. Joint ventures is simply like a marriage. When you decide to partner up with someone, can you have a beer with this person? If you can't even have a beer and a normal conversation with this person, just imagine when you have to talk about a roof replacement that costs $8,000. It's a very tough conversation to have. Joint ventures are a great way to scale, but just make sure you get into the right partnership. Make sure you have clear roles and responsibilities. The next method is called the Smith Maneuver, which is a fancy pants way of saying you're borrowing the equity out of your own home. And because you're borrowing it to invest, you can write off those interest payments. Now, you don't have to invest it in real estate. You can invest in stocks. And I bought two condos using this method. How this method works is that as your property grows in value, say over a 10 year period, many banks will loan you a part of that equity value. In Canada, banks will loan you up to 65% of the loan to value at 80% of the market value. Now, I know that was a huge mouthful, so I'm going to use an example to explain this really clearly. Imagine you bought a home for $400,000 and it grows to $800,000 over a 10-year period. Now, because you've been paying down this home every single year very aggressively, you only have $100,000 left on the mortgage. So, the calculation would be take the home's market value, which is 800 grand, multiply by 80% because the banks will 
only loan you up to 80% of the market value and then 65% loan to value. So 80% times 800 grand is 640 grand. Then you subtract your mortgage balance, which is 100 grand. So you're left with 540 grand. And then banks will only loan you 65% of the value. So you take 65% times $540,000, which leaves you $351,000 as a line of credit against your own home, which acts like a credit card, which is as good as cash. If you don't withdraw it, you don't need to pay any interest. The last method is called the Burr method, which is the buy it, renovate, refinance, then repeat. How this method works is that you buy a property under market value and you force appreciate by putting in some renovations like changing the carpets to hardwood, uh, doing cosmetic changes, renovating the kitchen, adding a new bathroom or adding a new bedroom. Basically, you're force appreciating so that the equity value goes up really fast in a very short period of time. And for a lot of real estate investors, they'll actually quickly pull that equity out within the year or two, and then use that money to go buy their next rental property. Now, for me personally, I never felt comfortable pulling the money out within a year or two because I always felt like I'm over leveraging myself. I'm putting myself at more risk. So that's why I decided to wait 10 years. Even though I renovated the property, I actually just left the money in, even though, yes, it went up in equity value by twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, but I never felt comfortable reboring that money and breaking the mortgage and using that cash and going by the next rental property. I really encourage you to be very careful with the Burr method. I only used it on one property out of the 14 properties that I bought with myself and my family. Because you can imagine in a high interest rate environment like we have right now, and if you had oh, decided to refinance every one of your properties, you could, could be completely over leverage and get yourself in a lot of trouble. It's great in a low interest rate environment. It's like a cocaine addiction. You want more because you have access to cash, but real estate cycles go up and down. So I really encourage you to be very careful with this method. Now let's talk about the two biggest pitfalls that a lot of investors do that can completely ruin your entire journey. Number one is quitting your nine to five job. When I quit my job at 35 years old and after I scaled my real estate portfolio, I wanted to buy a bigger home for my family. And unfortunately for me, it was a complete financing nightmare. I had to put in 25% down payment and prove that I had a few hundred thousand dollars worth of assets in my portfolio because I didn't have a steady paycheck in the eyes of the top five banks. I encourage you, don't quit your nine to five job. Otherwise, if you decide to buy more real estate, while you're self-employed, you're going to get not that great of an interest rates. You're not going to get that great of terms. And it's going to be a lot more difficult to qualify for. Now, the second biggest pitfall is using the Burr method way too often. I see so many people pushing out on social media. Burr method, which is the buy, renovate, refinance, and then repeat. It's like a cocaine addiction. It is very, very enticing in a low interest rate environment to uh, refinance your properties and pull out the cash and then go buy your next rental property and do that every single year. In fact, so many people have used this and actually bought many properties within the year. But when you're in a high interest rate environment and you're completely over leveraged, you could have significant mortgage payments and interest payments for all your properties and it can be super, super stressful. Here's one actionable step you can take right now, which is knowing your capital. So where are you gonna find the capital? I really encourage you to work with a strong real estate mortgage broker. I learned this the hard way. I thought I could just get loans from the banks, but unfortunately banks have their rules and some of them won't loan out more than three properties. If you decide to go with the wrong bank, it could completely jeopardize your real estate investing journey, make it super difficult to finance for more rental properties. That's why with a mortgage broker, they have many banks they can work with. They can get you the best terms. So I really encourage you to find a very strong real estate mortgage broker. If you watch to the end of this video, thank you. I have a free guide on real estate investing, which talks about deal analysis, a welcome kit for your tenants, and much more. Download in the link below. If you want to learn more about Real Estate Investing Canada in a safe and 
approachable manner, check out this playlist up here. Bye!